Hey guys, welcome to the latest video on the EOS RP. We're gonna be going into the menu system and diving deep into some of the new features that this little camera has and get you guys really excited about what this camera can do. So guys, as you can see, the EOS RP is a very small and nimble camera. It's perfect to go traveling with, but you don't lose out of any of the features. You've got a powerhouse camera, very small and nimble in your hand that you can pack with all of your existing lenses or use the RF lenses designed specifically for this camera. This sensor is a fantastic sensor to give you so much detail and clarity through your images. Coupled with the RF lenses, you're gonna get some incredible photos. So guys, let's move into some of the features that I really love about this camera. First thing that really jumped off the page to me when I was looking through the menu system is it has a focus bracketing mode. We can use it for macro photography, which I'm gonna demonstrate here, but it can also be used for landscape photography or any product photography that you wanna do where you need every little bit of detail and focus throughout that whole image. So if we're looking at a scene like this, I wanna be able to focus on the closest subject in the frame but then also get everything in focus to infinity. Now, you may think, why don't you just use your aperture? Why don't you put that to f16 and get greater depth of field? Whenever you're using a macro lens, that depth of field shortens quite dramatically. So what I wanna be able to do is be able to focus on the closest thing, subject in the frame, and then the camera will automatically adjust that focus throughout the whole scene and take photos incrementally throughout that system. So what we're going to do now is we're going to flip our screen so we can watch this scene together without having to lay on the table. And we're going to be able to set the scene up, create our composition, our framing, set the focus to the very first subject that we can see in that frame. And then we set the amount of shots that we want and how far we want the image to be able to focus through. And we set it to go. So let's go through that system on the back of the camera. Let's go into our shoot menu. Now on this, camera it's on shoot number five so we go to shoot five we come down to focus bracketing we're going to enable this and then we're going to choose the number of shots that we want to use for this now for this scene uh, by default it's set to 100 I'm going to drop this to 50 images and then we're going to go our focus increments we want to go narrow so I'm setting it to three so during this, the camera is going to take these 50 shots. It's going to capture different focal planes throughout that whole scene. And then once all those 50 images are done, we can take this into post-production later and stack them into one full image with everything in focus. Now we're going to go into a little bit more detail about shooting with the viewfinder and using the touch screen, touch and drag functionality. We're going to go into our touch and drag autofocus settings and we're just going to make sure that we have it enabled. Our positioning method is a personal preference. I prefer absolute, so I have the whole screen to adjust. And active touch area is all dependent on which eye you use when you're photographing. So for me, I'm a lefty, I use my left eye when I'm photographing. So I like to have the bottom left hand section of the screen active to initiate the touch and drag. This works really well for me because it means that I'm not affecting the screen or the focus points when I'm shooting and I don't touch it with my nose instead of my finger. So for me, bottom left, camera comes up to my eye and I touch and slide my focus point around until it's on the subject and then I can focus and capture that shot. Nice and simple, easy to use. Another really great feature of this camera is that it has face detection, but not only face detection, it has eye detection as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna photograph our cameraman slash model here, and we're gonna show how the eye detection works with face detection when photographing in stills or in video. So our model comes into frame, and what we can do is, that is just face detection. If we hit the set button, we can enable AF eye detection and it'll grab and lock on to the eye as well as the face. The best thing about this feature is that when I'm using face detection and eye detection, even though I move throughout the frame, it will lock on to the eye and track that and it'll move and change focus as I move in or further away from our subject. 
Also worth mentioning, AI survey with eye detection can be done in continuous shooting mode. So you're not restricted to shooting one frame per eye detection. You have the ability to lock onto your subject eye and focus and continually shoot them through a sequence of images. So if you have a subject walking towards you, the camera is going to lock on to face detection, then eye detection to confirm that focus. And as they walk towards you, you can continually hold the shutter down to make sure you're getting sharp, beautiful results every time. So if you're transitioning from a entry level camera or you're just picking up photography for the first time, but you want to jump into a camera that's got all the great features, this camera has everything you need. There's a specific feature in one of the modes here called FV. This is also known as flexible priority. This enables the camera to work in a completely automatic way, but helps you to guide the camera in what you want it to do to achieve the best photo. If you want to adjust the shutter speed, you have the ability to just adjust that shutter speed. But then if you wanted to change the scene and get less depth of field, you could adjust your aperture and the camera will adjust both ISO and shutter speed for you. So this is a very fluid way of shooting and learning in that process as well. So you have the option to choose your ISO, your aperture, your shutter speed without having to change this mode dial on top. It's a very cool feature and it's something that I find for people that are just beginning in photography or wanting to hone their skills a little more and focus on the action that they're shooting. It's a great feature to use and to be able to adjust on the fly. I want to go into one of the other features I really love about this camera and it's the interval timer. So this is built into the camera. You don't have to have an intervalometer and have a separate device. It's all built into the one camera. So you don't have to worry about leaving that remote at home. You can uh, set the camera with the interval timer. Coming into the shoot menu, we come across to interval timer and we enable the interval timer. And in this mode, if we hit the info button, we can go into the details. We can set the interval that we want to use. So I'm going to go every four seconds and you can set the number of shots. Now you have the option of one all the way to 99, or if you want, you can go to zero, zero, which is unlimited. So you can have this capturing that perfect storm that's rolling past your house. With all the lightning, you could set up a really long, really long interval timer, set that to unlimited, and see how many shots of lightning you can capture, all built into the camera without having to use any other remote. So guys, let's jump into the video features of the EOS RP. So looking at the back of the camera here, you can see that we have our movie record size and we can see that we can record full HD at 50p and also 25 frames per second. But to be able to access the 4K shooting mode, we need to be in the mode dial on the actual camera. So if we have a look at the top of our screen, you can't be in a manual mode or any other function, we need to be on the video camera. Once we set our video camera there, we can go back to our menu, we can go to the front of our shoot menu and access the movie recording size and we can enable 4K. So this is a feature to make sure that you go into your menu settings to select 4K if you're wanting to shoot 4K, but then also to adjust your movie crop your sound recording if you want to set that to manual if you are using an external mic and you can even initiate or enable your movie digital IS so you can enable that or use the enhanced options. At the very top here you have your shooting mode now if you want the camera to automatically adjust exposure you can just use the shooting mode as standard but you can also come down to manual movie exposure. So you're controlling everything. So if you're in a production and you're wanting to set the shutter speed or set the aperture for the style of shooting that you're doing, you can control all of that options in this screen here. Once you hit OK, then it'll work as a normal stills camera with the adjusting of shutter speed, aperture, ISO, even exposure compensation. You can adjust all your settings, your white balance as well. So it gives you a great opportunity to be as creative as you want with your video, or you can be as simple and automatic 
as you need it to be. So once you've finished with shooting video, when you're shooting stills with stabilization, you can actually get up to five stops of stabilization. This is a great feature to have in the EOS RP because it means that you can handheld shoot in really low light conditions. I've personally shot with this camera in very low light conditions without a tripod and been able to freeze all the detail in a scene at half a second exposure, which is a crazy amount of, of stabilization power that this camera has. So guys, I hope you've got a lot out of this video and you love this camera just as much as I do. There's a lot of really cool features in this and I'm kind of blown away by the, the versatility of this camera. It's light, it's small, it's nimble. You can chuck it in your bag, you can take it anywhere and everywhere you go, but you don't lose out on the quality of camera or the quality of imagery that you can capture with this. The range of lenses being EF, EFS lenses, you've got that whole suite of lenses you have at home. You can use the new RF lenses with that new control ring on the camera as well. So it gives you more flexibility when you're shooting. So I can't wait to see what you guys capture with this camera. Get out there and shoot with it and show us what you've got.